Hello, I'm back. Took some time off. Busy, 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 busy. And that's all I will say on that. Um, I wanted to enlighten audiences on what it's like in the Church of Scientology, the cult of Scientology, regarding L. Ron Hubbard writings. L. Ron Hubbard was a, was a writer that wrote about everything, but more so how to on everything. How to clean glass, how to polish an engine, how to talk to a reporter, how to wake up someone from the dead, how to bring them back from unconsciousness, how to do laundry, what talcum, what hand cream to buy and use, how to build a purification uh, sauna, how to manage a budget, how to make money, how to make others make money, how to make others make more money, <laughs> how to lie, literally, how to lie and get away with it, how to be a good Scientologist. And L. Ron Hubbard is also known in the cult as Source. The definition of Source is creator originator, initiator. When you are in the cult, you must apply, believe, and conduct yourself according to source. So if you casually say something and you can't back it up with a Hubbard reference, you are off source. On source means you're quoting Hubbard and applying what Hubbard said to do. In other words, if you did your budget and you said, I did it per finance series number three, you're on source. You're doing it the way Hubbard said, you manage your money. So you lose, as you go forward in the cult of Scientology, you lose any way to express or think because you must only do it the way Hubbard said to do it. In the cult of Scientology, you must do everything per Hubbard's knowledge and wisdom. There is no way, even if you're an artist, you must obey, duplicate, and follow the Hubbard art series. Because he will tell you in these issues that he's written. He also had a write-up on how to manage someone who is dying. You do some final steps with them just before they die. And one of the steps you do is coach them that when they die and come out of, leave their body, they run around a planet and circle round and round and round and it'll stabilize them. Hubbard said, it is very disorienting when you lose your body. You, you're completely woozy and dizzy and blah, and if you run around, just, just it's really a, a harmonic of the running program. Let me tell you, just reminded me, I had to run around for just punishment, absolute sadism, a 12 hour a day run around a pole. And to tell you about these intergalactic stories, I want to tell you the story behind the running program. There's a story. I read it, written by Hubbard, a long time ago, maybe a trillion years ago, L. Ron Hubbard was chasing a bad, bad criminal. And it was a long chase. It, it sounded when you read the advice that the chase went on for years. And finally Hubbard caught him. He caught up and he got him. 
And the guy was completely sane. He no longer had destructive impulses. He no longer was evil. And Hubbard got it. The running had made this crazy, destructive, horrible, evil man sane. So Hubbard devised the running program so that you lose all of your aberration and your bad, and you become sane. That was the theory behind the running program, which you can go to Superpower Building, give them $2,500, and run. In fact, Mike Grinda says it's, trans, it's in 17 languages. That is really bizarre. How to become sane when you're an evil son of a bitch is to run. Hubbard is saying, run, and you will become sane. Now, Hubbard never ran. Hubbard was never out running 12 hours a day. We, the, the, pun, <laughs> the punishment team, we, the victims of this run, 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 run. In some ways, I feel I was a guinea pig. I had to run 12 hours a day to... Because in the intergalactic confederacies of a billion trillion years ago, Hubbard was chasing a, a, a runner who was evil, who became sane. Now we come to computers. This is a computer age. And Hubbard was, in his writings, the master of computers. Hubbard did not want the world to know he was really running the whole shebang. So this thing was invented called Hubbard Advices. In other words, he was a mere consultant. He was not, because of all the lawsuits on him and this and that, it was better for him to show that he was not, in fact, managing and ordering everything. So he was just, and that, he wasn't putting, sending down an order, he was giving a consultant advice. It was playing with nomenclature, playing with the word. And because he became the master of computers, he put out a huge series in binders called the Chug Advices. And the Chug Advices told management everything they needed to know about computers. And it starts off with this fantastic story of oh one billion years ago way way back in the galactic star wars time track there was this empire of chug c h u g chug and the people of chug were so distraught and so unhappy because their taxes kept going up 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 and this brilliant computer found out that it was the Duke of Chug that was behind. He was the who, and the why of taxes going up was the Duke of Chug. And the computer sentenced the Duke of Chug to death. And the Duke of Chug was executed. And Hubbard found out that the computer could be brilliant. It could actually order a death sentence. So Hubbard ordered that the CEO members in this division called Incom devise a computer that was so brilliant. Now remember this was late 1970s, early 80s. Artificial intelligence was in its infancy, nothing like it is today. But in 79, 78, when he was writing the Chug Advices, he said, a computer had to be built that would be source and would replace him. He didn't trust, he didn't think David Miscavige or some committee here or there would run, run it all. So, no, Hubbard wanted the computer to run some, all of Scientology. And you know, it really was flawed. It was so flawed. A program was advise, uh, devised called TNT, <laughs> target, you give a target, you nudge, T, 
to get that target done, and then you tally how much compliance, it was called TNT. I got ordered by TNT, and TNT was kind of mean. The first time it said, hey, we ordered that you do this and this, where is it? And the next email from TNT was tougher. It was a final warning. And then the next one was, you are ordered to a court of ethics. And then the next ethics gradient was, you're going to get a committee of evidence because you're in non-compliance. And then finally, TNT could remove you from your job. And the computer did it all. Well, what was so flawed with this TNT is, you could be ordered from five different seniors and echelons and the messenger said in this in your immediate scene and TNT was trying to shove it's called cross-ordering in Scientology. Cross-order mean you can't get one thing done because you're being ordered in a crowd. <laughs> so the point of it is that we have Google, we have YouTube, we have Twitter, and we have Facebook groups out the roof. So the archaic chug advices never ever even saw or predicted the internet. So from these intergalactic fantasy stories come big advices. And if you want to be a good Scientologist, and you don't want to get in trouble as a Sea Org member, you must be on source.